Now we're going to talk about how to place electrodes, uh, also called sensors, on the uh, trainee. This is Bill Merkless, who's generously offered to uh, be a subject for us for this demonstration. Uh, typically what you'll receive is five gold disc electrodes, and they'll be received in a package like this, along with some cotton balls. And uh, we'll use one of these uh, for a scalp electrode, and uh, we'll also use one to demonstrate a mastoid connection, uh, in addition to some of the other techniques we're going to have. Now keep in mind that the exact color of the wires you use is not as important as that they're in the proper location and that they plug into the correct color on the BrainMaster module. Uh, if it's convenient to use the, the matching colors, then uh, you can go ahead and do that. First I'll demonstrate a scalp connection. Um, we're going to put an electrode on, on C3 on Bill here and uh, use it for a uh, central motor strip uh, monitoring. As we saw before, if CZ is up top center and uh, T3 would be over here just above the ear, C3 is about halfway between them. So we're going to find this location on the scalp and the first thing we do is simply pull the hair apart in a part so that we have uh, the ability to connect to, the, to touch the scalp right here. First thing we're going to use is the new prep gel. This is a prepping gel and it's slightly abrasive and it's used in order to clean the skin surface. So I take a small amount on my finger here and then going to the scalp location we've designated, I'm simply going to scrub it a little bit and use this also to push the, the hair aside. This gives us a nicely prepared location. The next thing we're going to do is take out the electrode. By the way, we do recommend the first time you get these electrodes, go ahead and wash them in um, warm water and uh, that will make sure that any coating that was uh, put on during shipping will be removed. We then take the 1020 paste, which is a conductive paste, you open it, and what I prefer to do is to first squeeze out a little bit of the paste like this. Uh, this then gets it out of the tube where it's easy to get and you then scoop it onto the electrode in a manner like this. Be careful not to use the electrode like an ice cream scoop and dig too much out because uh, it's not designed to take that kind of wear and tear. Once the electrode has had paste applied to it, and we recommend an amount about equal to a large P, we then place it over the scalp location that's been prepared and press down but not terribly hard, press down securely and kind of confidently and then take the cotton ball, place it over the location and then press down primarily on the outer area of the cotton ball, pressing gently in the center. What this does is presses the electrode down close to the scalp without pushing it all the way down to the scalp and then the cotton ball gathers up some of that paste and gives us a nice connection. This is now very securely connected and we have a good scalp connection. Okay, good. Now we're going to demonstrate how to make a mastoid connection. The mastoid is the bony protrusion behind the ear. Bill's mastoid, for example, is right here. And this is a convenient location to make a reference or a ground connection without having to use ear clips. Again, we take the new prep a small amount on the finger and rubbing vigorously but not too vigorously behind the head right here behind the ear. Now you don't have to hurt anybody with this uh, but do be firm and uh, make sure you, you clean it well. You can leave the little bit of this film on if you like or you could wipe it off with a tissue. It really makes no difference. I tend to like to leave a little bit of it on actually. We then take the electrode that's going to be used for the mastoid connection We've picked a yellow one in this case. Again, taking the 1020 paste and gathering up an amount equal to a large P balled up on the ball of the electrode. We then take the cotton ball from here and we'll just see pressing this on the mastoid again firmly and then pushing the cotton ball over it to spread that paste 
again, now we have a nice secure connection and the lead wire can come over this way. Finally, we're going to demonstrate the use of an ear clip. If your clinician has recommended ear clips, they'll be provided to you and they'll come in a package like this. The ear clip consists of two gold disc electrodes which are held together with a spring-loaded holder. This makes it very convenient to make a connection to the ear uh, and they're very commonly used. Again, we'll prepare the, the surface and when you use an ear clip it's important to remember you're connecting to both the front and the rear of this portion of the ear, the ear lobe. We clean that again with the paste, or rather the uh, gel. Then, taking the ear clip and again squeezing out about a half inch of paste, it's very important to make sure that a sufficient amount of gel or of paste is applied to both sides of the ear clip. So it should look like this. You have a ball of paste on both cups and then the ear clip is placed on the ear and allow it to squeeze itself but don't press too hard and don't press so hard that you squeeze all of the paste away. It's important that there's a layer of paste underneath the cups on both the front and the back and you don't really want the metal of the electrode to touch the skin. If you do that it can cause a little bit of electrical interference. So instead making sure it floats just like that on a nice cushion of paste, we've now made uh, another ear connection in this way and we now have three connections. Now we're going to talk about checking the electrode connections. If you have an electrode checker such as this Checktrode or a professional electrode checking device, it's always a good idea to uh, use it to make sure your connections are appropriate. We have here the three wires from the three electrodes that we've placed and when you check them they're always checked in pairs. You must use two in order to measure the impedance between them. So for example we'll take the ear clip which is black and plug it into this connector here and then we'll take the scalp electrode which is the blue and we'll plug it into here. What we see now is that this electrode checker is telling us that the impedance of this pair is less than 10 K ohms. That's less than 10 kilo ohms, which means 10,000 ohms. This is acceptable for general use. As you can see, we have two red lights for the higher impedance values, a yellow light if it's below 20 K, which is marginal, and two green lights, one for below 10 K and one for below 5 K. Since this is below 10 K, it's acceptable. Now we also want to check this electrode that we've put behind the ear, which is yellow. It doesn't matter which one we remove at this point. We can take out the blue and replace it with the yellow. Now we're measuring between the black and the yellow, which means between this electrode here and the electrode right next to it over here. And again, the impedance is below 10 K ohms. So what we've seen in this case is that all three of these electrodes if you measure any two in pairs, you'll measure below 10K. We'll verify it by taking the black out and putting the blue in, and again, below 10K. So all pairs of these are acceptable, and we could go ahead and use these uh, sensors for EEG monitoring.